All right, it's Sunday and we are about to go to the world of Coca-Cola here in downtown Atlanta. So as we leave the world of Coca-Cola, one thing that really stood out to me is just how synonymous their overall brand has become with happiness and living a full life and how ingrained they have uh, made their brand in our culture and just across the world in general. And as a small business owner, you know, that's something that really appeals to me. What can we do to uh, make our brands stand for something so positive and make our brands ingrained in our own culture? I have a super busy week, so you guys are going to see a lot in this week's vlog. Uh, I started this morning by doing a coaching call with a business out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Sorry, I was just looking over your website and everything, but if you can just kind of like tell me more about what you're doing and, and your goals down the line. And then uh, this week I have a lot of projects going on, such as building a landing page, writing a speaker's agreement for uh, the conference that we're planning for the Florida Pet Services Association. This will be my first time running payroll with our new payroll company, so I have to figure that out. Uh, I have to write an article for Pet Sitter World Magazine. And then at the end of the week on Friday, I am actually flying to California to pick up three cats and transport them back to Florida. So you guys are really going to see a lot this week and next week. So uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of this content. I wanna quickly say thank you for all of the support on that first vlog that went out. I actually got my all-time favorite YouTube comment on that video, so thank you so much for that, and uh, let me know what you guys want to see more of in these weekly vlogs down in the comments below. So I ended up spending literally the entire day on the computer yesterday. Uh, for over 12 hours, I sat right here at my dining room table on Zoom calls and on phone calls and replying to emails and just all kinds of fun stuff like that. So it's no surprise that today I woke up just not really wanting to do anything. And I find that that happens any time that I spend a lot of time on the computer. And it really just reminds me of why I started my business to begin with. And I have a lot of reasons why I started a pet sitting and dog walking business, but one of the main reasons is that I never wanted to spend my days uh, stuck inside in front of a computer. I am happiest and I'm most fulfilled as a human being when I'm out in nature and I'm play playing with the dogs and doing things like that. So even though I have a huge list of stuff that needs to be done on the computer today, uh, after I do a couple Zoom calls this morning, Turkey and I are going to go for an adventure and uh, get myself back in the right headspace. That way I will be able to give uh, my all to this other stuff that needs to be done. All right, guys, after a five hour flight, I made it to California to pick up the three cats. And uh, I hung out with the clients for about an hour and got accustomed to the cats. And then we got the car loaded up and I just got on the road. So I was gonna quickly show you what our setup is. So we have three different crates uh, connected in the back of the car. So the cats have two crates to kind of hang out and get cuddled up. And then we have a third one back there with their litter tray. You can see we've only been on the road like literally like three miles and they've already dumped out some of their litter and they are not very happy so far, but we will get adjusted here pretty quickly. And uh, they, they will settle in and get comfortable, but it's just kind of a learning experience for all of us right now. It's 10 p.m. and we just got checked into a Motel 6 in Phoenix, Arizona. So it has been a long, long day. Uh, I got up at like five o'clock this morning to make it to my flight uh, from Atlanta to California. And then I landed in California and met with the clients and got accustomed to the cats and got the car loaded up and everything. And then drove from Ontario, California, all the way here to Phoenix. The cats are doing uh, pretty well so far. You know, they're not super happy. They were pretty talkative in the car and uh, they're hiding under the bed right now. Uh, so I'm just gonna let them kind of chill there for a while. 
So it's Saturday morning and I just got the kitties all loaded up and we're ready to hit the road again. But uh, we've had a couple uh, exciting experiences here at the Motel 6 in Phoenix that I wanted to quickly tell you about. Last night after we got settled into the room, uh, I was going to walk over to Popeye's that's next door to get some food. And uh, when I got back to the room, uh, two of the cats were like visibly sitting right at the edge of the bed, under the bed, and then the third cat I just could not find anywhere. And I, I turned the room upside down, like looked everywhere. And I finally found her hanging from the inside of this curtain, literally on the other side of it, hanging like midway. And then this morning, um, you know, they've, uh, they came out and played a little bit during the night, but they pretty much stayed under the bed uh, since we got to this hotel. And this morning when I was trying to get them into their carriers, uh, they did not want to come out of the bed. And I ended up having to flip the entire bed on its end and uh, lean it against the wall so that they couldn't hide under it. And then I, then I could catch them. I've been giving them liquid gabapentin to help keep them calm. And we also have some of the feel away. Uh, and I brought, you know, toys and just different things for them to play with. You can see that I also have a sheet and this pee pad and some other stuff kind of draped over those crates to keep it nice and dark in there. I think that'll help keep them calm uh, while, the, while we're on the road. Another option instead of having uh, these three crates connected or instead of using one large crate for everything is we could have uh, put them in each crate individually, but then they wouldn't have access to litter and still have room to uh, move around and stuff. So I wanted to make sure that they have access to litter and water and food and everything uh, because we're pulling 12 hour days on the road for four days in a row. I've done a lot of these long distance pet transportation gigs over the last couple of years and I've really grown to love them. You know, I just love driving. It's like a meditation to me and it's so cool to get to see and experience different parts of the country, especially with pets. You know, and uh, usually when I'm driving dogs across the country, we get to do cool nature trails and we go to uh, national parks and stuff like that. And this is my first time driving cats across the country. So it's a little bit different experience and we're not gonna be doing as much sightseeing as I typically would. But uh, you know, my least favorite thing about these long distance drives is the fact that we usually end up eating so much fast food and just crap food. Uh, you guys know I'm I'm big on not eating that kind of stuff, and I try to eat as healthy as possible. Uh, so one thing that I do at the beginning of each of these trips is I always go to a grocery store and I get bananas and trail mix and just some uh, a little bit healthier snacks that I can eat on the road to try to minimize uh, some of that crap food. I just got checked into a Best Western here in Fort Stockton, Texas to close out our second day on the road. And they upgraded me to a suite. Not too shabby, if I do say so myself. Definitely much, much better than the Motel 6 in Phoenix last night. That place was rough. So I decided to keep the cats in the bathroom at the hotel tonight. Um, I had to flip the bed on its side to get them out from under the bed this morning. So I just really don't want to have to do that again. Uh, it was not an enjoyable experience for me or the cats. Um, so I, I tried to set them up pretty nice in here. I sprayed some feel away on this towel and I have their scratching pad and toys in here and water. And uh, <laughs> this is one of the crates from the car with some towels that smell like home for them and I have their litter tray. So I'm just gonna sit in the bathroom with them and hang out and make sure they get lots of love. So this is Leia. This is Ray. I call Ray mama. And this is Ripley. Ripley is a pretty fluffy girl. Yes, she is. So today we drove from Phoenix, Arizona to Fort Stockton, Texas, which was about 10 hours of driving. 
And then tomorrow I'm hoping to make it to around New Orleans, which should be about 10 and a half, 11 hours of driving. And then I will have the cats delivered to their new home in Florida by the end of the day on Monday. Uh, so we're making really good time so far. I never book hotels in advance when I'm uh, doing these long distance drives. I always wait until about an hour or two before I'm ready to stop to book something because I just never want to feel like I have to get to a certain location uh, if I start feeling tired. Uh, because safety really is the most important part of, of doing these long distance drives. I always book hotels through Priceline because A, they typically have the best deals and B, uh, they have a membership where you get points and you can go up levels. And because I travel so much and book so many hotels every year, uh, they very often will give me these free upgrades like this. You know, I just booked a normal uh, queen room and they gave me the king suite. So, and, and that happens pretty often uh, just because I travel so much. And on the subject of hotels, you always have to call the hotel before you book it so that you can verify their pet policies. Because what most hotels will have online is just pets allowed or pets not allowed, but they almost all will have uh, fees or breed restrictions or a limit to how many pets you have. I actually didn't know until last night when I started looking for a place to stay that there are a lot more hotels that are dog friendly than there are uh, cat friendly hotels. I called like probably 10 different hotels that said pet friendly on their website and then I called them and they only allowed dogs or the ones that did allow cats only allowed up to two cats, but I have three. So because I'm posting these weekly vlogs every Sunday, I'm gonna cut it off here and you will have to tune in next week to see me finish this cross country drive and finally deliver the cats. And uh, just to give you a little teaser, uh, tomorrow on the drive, I am planning on talking uh, some about how I get these traveling clients and uh, some of the policies and some of the requirements because there are some legal requirements to getting paid to transport animals. So again, you're gonna have to tune in next week to see all of that. Be sure that you uh, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss the future videos. And I am Doug the Dog Guy from Bad to the Bone Pet Care reminding you to stay positive.